Hey, it's James Mulvaney here. Now, in today's video, I wanted to compare three different live broadcasting radio setups. We're gonna be looking at this setup here, which is a $5,000 plus setup. Very, very high-end, very expensive, but very fancy. We're gonna be comparing it with a mid-range setup, which retails around about $1,000, but it's gonna still give you amazing results. And also looking at a low budget setup, this is about $250, but even for $250, you can still get studio quality recordings. So without further ado, let's get cracking. All right, so it's a common misconception that to start a radio station, you need to go out and spend a fortune. You need to go out and spend thousands or thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment. It might be what the big radio companies want you to think because they don't want all this competition. However, the reality is from as little as around $250, you could probably even spend less if you wanted. You can go out and buy some equipment like the stuff I have in front of me, which will give you fantastic studio sounding results from your home office or you know, from your back room, wherever it is you're broadcasting from. This is great because it's so portable, you can even take it around with you, but it will give you, as I mentioned, studio quality recording. So I just wanted to walk you through the setup I have in front of me and talk about the various different individual components. So to begin with, we have a microphone, which is an XLR microphone. This is a dynamic mic. Um, this is made by a company called Rode and it's called the Pod Mic. So it's specifically designed for kind of broadcast and podcasting applications. The good thing about this is it doesn't pick up too much background noise, so you have to kind of be right up close to it, but it will sound amazing on most voices. It's connected via an XLR cable. Obviously this type of cable, you can't connect directly to your computer. So you need an audio interface such as this one. This is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. I've been using this for years. It sounds amazing and it also allows you to connect up to two microphones, which again means in future, if you want to expand your setup, you want to purchase a second microphone, perhaps for a guest or a co-presenter, you can connect two microphones here. It also has a headphone out. Headphones are really important. This is a cheap pair of headphones, it retails about $30, something like that. Over ear headphones are important if you're broadcasting live, you want to get a close monitor on what's going on, make sure that they cover your ears and it will also help block out background noise as well. Obviously all this is connected here to the MacBook, you could go and use any computer. It doesn't have to be a Mac. You can use a PC, uh, a laptop, a desktop. Computer is really irrelevant, but go out and invest in a good quality microphone and go out and invest in a decent quality audio interface. As I mentioned, this setup, all in all, probably about $250. Okay, so now in front of me, I've got a mid-range setup. This will retail around about $1,000. Obviously, this is kind of a guy price. You can go out and spend maybe a couple of thousand dollars on equipment, depending on what you want, how many microphones you have, how many headphones you've got. You know, it's all on a sliding scale. But to give you a guide price for one of these microphones and a boom arm and this gadget here, which I'm gonna talk for a sec, let's look around $1,000. So what have I got in front of me? Firstly, you'll see here, this is the main difference. This is the Rodecaster Pro. This is a digital, audio interface and mixing desk, um, which has got tons of functionality built right into it. So it has stuff like audio processing, which will make your microphone sound crisper and clearer when you're broadcasting live. You can route in audio from an external source, such as your iPhone or Android. You can also route audio from your computer. These buttons here are hotkeys, which will allow you to fire off jingles while you're broadcasting or beds that you might want to talk over. This is really designed specifically for online broadcasting applications. So if you're recording a podcast or if you're broadcasting internet radio, this is your mixer. This retails around $600. Um, a couple of microphone options here, which are an upgrade on the previous ones. This is Heil PR40. This microphone sounds amazing. And up here, we have the Electro Voice RE320, which again, sounds good. These are both dynamic microphones. They retail around $300 each, I think. Again, you know, it's just a case of the more you spend, the better quality microphone you're gonna get. But you don't need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on a microphone. You could spend $100 still. You know, you could upgrade your setup with a boom arm like this, which again, just allows you to position your microphone really well right in front of you um, and also boom arms will do the thing where you kind of if you're hitting a table it will help absorb some of that this one's mounted on a shock mount as well which i'll talk through in the next setup if a dynamic microphone is not your thing you could look at a condenser microphone word of caution with condenser microphones if you're in a room that's not particularly well sound treated like the one i'm in now coincidentally and you've got lots of echo in the background these aren't always the best. Um, this is a Blue Spark. I think it retails around two, three hundred dollars. Sounds really, really good for the price point. Um, but as I mentioned, if you're in a kind of a big 
echoey room, or if there's lots of background noise, maybe you've got the kids playing in the garden or traffic going past outside, stick to a dynamic mic because they are a lot better at filtering out that background noise. But, you know, as I mentioned, $1,000, the main difference here is the mixing desk. This will give you so much control over your broadcast. You can connect up to four mics here. You can connect multiple pairs of headphones. So this is really good if you want to actually create a radio studio where you're going to be you know, interviewing other people. You perhaps have a co-host sat next to you and you want to create a really professional setup. Another thing to consider is headphones. Perhaps you want to spend a little bit more on headphones. I think these retail around $50 to $100. These are a pair of Sennheiser headphones. Again, industry standard, really good quality audio. Again, we've gone for the over-ear ones, so you're kind of filtering out background noise. Lots and lots of headphone options available on the market. Find a pair that are comfortable that you can wear for prolonged periods. And again, if you're spending a little bit more money, you'll find that kind of comfort comes built in. Uh, a lot of the cheaper headphones aren't great if you're wearing them for, say, like a couple of hours at a time. Okay, so let's now move on to our $5,000 plus setup. And I know you've been waiting for this. Now, Here's the thing, this is $5,000 plus, because really, how much can you spend on setting up a professional radio studio? It's as long as a piece of string. Let me talk you through some of the equipment that we have here, which is more akin to what you'd find in a professional radio studio. Firstly, I'll start with the hub. This is a digital mixing desk uh, made by a company called Axia, which is absolutely awesome. This is not plugged in right now, but one of the benefits of this mixer is you can have obviously up to eight different sources plugged in. You can connect these to different bits of equipment and they're all completely assignable. So because it's completely digital, this runs directly into kind of effectively a box, which is like a computer and it's all completely digital. So you can route audio to whatever fader you want. Again, it can record onto computer, you can broadcast live there is tons and tons of stuff that you can do with a professional grade digital mixing desk like this they are expensive so it's not for everyone and it's certainly if you're going to be setting up a home studio something that would be a very very serious consideration if you're planning on investing in it what else have we got here we've got professional grade studio monitors again this is something that you might want to invest in if you don't want to sit with your headphones on all the time just bear in mind that if you've got monitors and you've got microphones connected you want to make sure that the monitors will automatically switch off when, up, when you put that microphone fader up, because otherwise you'll end up with a very, very bad headache because of all the feedback you're getting. Here we've got uh, professional grade microphone number one, which is the Shure SM7B. This has kind of become our go-to microphone when we're setting up a lot of studios, either radio or podcasting studios, just because number one, they sound incredible. You know, this was used by Michael Jackson to record the Thriller album. It's used by lots and lots of recording artists and also it's used widely in the radio industry for studios, whether it be live broadcast studios or podcasting studios. Sounds amazing. Um, again, it's a dynamic microphone, so it's good at rejecting background noise, and you need to be quite close up to the microphone when you're actually recording. Uh, moving over here, we have a professional condenser microphone. This is the Neumann U87. This retails around about $2,000, I think. Sounds amazing, but you do need a really good treated room. Recording on a room like this, where it's lots of echo, probably wouldn't be great with this mic. I just wanted to talk also about shock mounts. These are aftermarket shock mounts. E.g. you buy this as a separate thing to your microphone. These are made by a company called Rycott, I believe. Perfect for helping reduce any kind of taps on the desk. As you can see, the microphone is suspended on this kind of elastic cated cage, which kind of absorbs any impact, you know, on the, the mic arm itself or through the desk. It will give you a really professional sound. Used again in every single commercial radio or podcast studio that we've installed or that we see. Uh, you know, other companies using. Lastly, let's talk about headphones. These are industry standard broadcast headphones. These are made by a company called Bayer Dynamic. They are DT770 Pro. Um, these headphones retail around, I think $100, $150 a piece. They sound amazing. They, you can wear these for hours and hours at a time without getting tired of them. You won't even know you're wearing them. Um, and you know, they're really, really good. They're, there's a reason they've become industry standard. Again, they're very durable and they last a long time. So although a lot of this equipment has got a higher price point, you'll find that it lasts a long time. Finally, I wanted to show you kind of an optional add-on. Most radio studios now that we see um, will have a kind of live DJ setup similar to this one. Uh, Pioneer CDJs and Pioneer Mixing Desk, which again will be routed normally through your main broadcast console. Very important if you want to have live DJs, if you want to invite DJs into your studio to perform live sets. 
Again, this stuff you can spend easily another $3,000 on this kind of equipment, but we do see it in a lot of professional studios now. So there we have it, three different setups at varying price points, ranging from $5,000 down to $250 on the low end because you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money to get a professional sounding result. Now, if you've got any questions or perhaps you're considering setting up a studio, please put them in the comments below. We love to discuss equipment and uh, you know perhaps you're thinking about starting your own studio or maybe you've already built one. What does your setup look like in your studio? Let us know in the comments and we'll get the discussion going. What makes the difference between a successful radio station and a failed project? Well, after working with tens of thousands of broadcasters over the past 15 years and helping lots of people start their own radio stations, I see the same mistakes being made time and time again. So what I've done is I've put together a guide called the five step radio startup checklist, which really covers everything from concepting your radio station to marketing it. And this guide, I believe, will make the difference between you having a successful venture with longevity and creating something that doesn't quite hit the mark. Go and grab your copy now for free at jamesm.com slash radio. Just enter your name, and your email address, and I'll send it over to you straight away. You're going to find it really useful. There's tons of information there which will help you with concepting and launching your brand and bringing it to market.